Greetings. Today I'm going to tell you about a ESP32 DevKit C breakout slash carrier board I designed. But for some history, Espresso originally came out with this ESP32 room module. It's a cool little Wi Fi module. It's got two cores, extends the LX6 running at 240 megahertz kind of zips along runs free rtos these little modules are great to experiment with they can uh very versatile and i suspect like everybody else has quite a few of these just laying around i know i do uh, I see them around at work. Uh, they're they're great to, like I said, to experiment with and do fun projects with. Since this module came out, Espresso have, has come out with a few more derivatives. There's a Risk Five. I think it's the C3. The ESP32 has both the Room and the Rover module. This is their first generation of the ESP32. The second generation is the ESP32 S2. And lately, a new one is the S3. The S2 has a single core, but it's a LX7 extensor core. And it this is the dev kit C for the S2 module. Has two USB interfaces. Since after just recently the S3 module has become available. This is the S3 room. S3 dev kit. So I've got quite a few of these. This is uh this is the S2 rover module. Let's see if you can is it gonna focus? Yeah, there this is the Soela module. So as you can see, there are quite a few here. These are some of the older modules. There's a, another S2 Rover. This is typically how in the past I've done things. Just interface the wires right onto the header pins. Another example, this one has a, a Grove type interface. So these things kind of just Plug on here like that. Sometimes I'll put in a solder on an extra header here for additional power and grounds. Sometimes I'll add them on to the to the GPIO pins for extra I squared C interfaces. As you can see, I got quite a few of these, and uh, they, they they tend to collect and. Uh, they t tend to collect and sit around, and I don't do much with them after that. And and there's several of these laying around at work, and so I was thinking, well, maybe I should design a carrier slash breakout board for them, get some new life out of them. What I came up with is a carrier board for the Dev Kit C version, and this is it right here. The dev kit C will plug right into this slot here. I solder them directly in. Along the outside, I put in Grove connectors. There's a I squared C multiplexer right here that interfaces to the ESP32. There are eight I squared C interfaces. And I have a 
switching regulator here for 3.3 volts to power the Grove interfaces and then a USB-C connector port right here. Now, here's what one looks like with all the connectors on it. Pretty snazzy looking. The dev kit C basically fits on here just like that. Once soldered in, it basically is permanent and I don't mind. And these modules aren't very expensive. Don't mind soldering them in one bit. Here's a, a green one. Looks kind of cool. I don't normally like green PCBs, but this, this looks nice with the black contrast. This has, of course, the Arduino headers here as well, or shields. There's two uh, grow pins here, have GPIO pins 39, 40, 41, and 42 coming out right here, which is just happens to be the JTAG interface for the ESP32. And then there's three Grove interfaces here that have GPIO pins that go directly to the um, processor module. There's oh, a nice green one. Here's a, a white one based on the, the older version of the ESP module. I think the white looks kind of nice too. What else do I have here? So here's one that has the module soldered in. If you notice, I have all the GPIO pins labeled right here, all along there. Oh, you can see a little closer. Yeah, yeah. everything's labeled nicely. This one here has a real-time clock and a temperature sensor interface to I squared C ports. I'll plug that in. We'll take a look at the, look at the output real quick. Give me one second here, and there we go. This is the art. Wait, let's see. Okay, so there's our output from the board. Look right. Right here is the time and date, and then temperature sensor values right here. Just be able to put my finger on the sensor and sure enough, temperature goes up. I like this I squared C Grover setup. There are just tons of breakout boards you can buy on Amazon that have all kinds of functionality. There are current monitors, I squared S, amplifiers, audio amplifiers. Uh, accelerometers, gyroscopes, magnetometers, switches, UARTs. Uh, the, 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 there's there's a plethora, a myriad, a cornucopia, a whole bunch of different kinds. <laughs> no shortage of breakout boards for Grove. If you go to Seed's website, it's S E E E D. They're the originator of the Grove connector system. They've got many, many Grove boards for sale. And like I said, they're all over Amazon. A lot of times I just buy breakout boards and I'll, I'll, I'll do things like this. I'll buy a, 
uh, non-grove breakout board and, and just solder wires onto a grove connector. So let's, let me turn this back off. So there's basically this board showing the temperature sensor and the real time clock. Let me show you another one here. I got one that will demonstrate, get this stuff out of the way. Here's, here's another one that has this Neo Pixel L strip and a RGB or a, a it's got a LED bar, like a progress bar, battery indicator bar. Things that light up are always kind of cool. So there's the Neo Pixel and the color bar. Kind of cool. You can run the RGBW LED strips like the SK6812, I think it is. It's kind of breathes new life into these modules, gives them a little bit more functionality. Kind of neat. We just got a new engineer at work and I plan on giving him one of these. One of the primary reasons why I'm making this video so he can become familiar with what the breakout board is, what an ESP32 module is, so he can start writing software for it. So here's some other uh, little things that can be plugged in to, to Grove. This one here is the INA. 219 current monitor. Let's see if I can thing will focus in there. Yeah, there it is. That's a I squared I squared C Grove. There's a I squared S audio interface amplifier for a speaker. This one here takes up will take up two interface connectors. Just plug them in right here. What's neat about the ESP32 is you can configure any the, the pins to be any peripheral you want. They're not tied to any particular pin. There's also these grub switches that light up. They're kind of kind of neat, kind of cool. Nice to play around with the light up. You need buttons, switches on your system. There's a HTU21 temperature sensor, kind of like the SHT21. Kind of nice. There's a ICM20948. It has a XYZ gyroscope, magnetometer, and accelerometer. Probably has temperature sensor in it as well. He's Kind of hard to find anymore lately with all the component shortages. Here's another three channel current monitor. This one here I brought wires directly off the current sense resistors to screw in terminals here. But these all plug into the, most of these plug into the I squared C interface to collect data. Normally, this is how I'd used to do things in the past. Not anymore. So here's one other uh, one other example I'll show you. Set this off to the side here. Getting quite a quite a pile of stuff here. One other thing. This is a wave share four inch. TFT display, nice big four inch display. It's kind of cool. This particular 
module is a ESP32 S2, one of the one of the older ones. It works works just fine. And I'll plug this in into the Arduino shield headers. I'm sure everybody will be familiar with this particular graphics uh, demo program by Adafruit. I kind of prefer the kind of prefer the library from uh, Bodmer. It's the TFT eSpy. I think it's a little bit nicer. But when you're in a crunch, this will do. So there's a lot that can be done with the ESP32. It's a fun little Wi-Fi module. So I recommend you run out and buy yourself a ESP32 Wi-Fi module and have some fun. So thanks for watching and have a good day.